Video number 172, finding circular function values. Now in order to do this, you're going to have to know the 30, 60, and 45, 45 right triangle perfectly. If you can't draw the 30, 60, 45, you're going to need to practice that. The 45 is very simple, guys. It's a half of a, it's half a square. So therefore, you know, these are both the ones because they have to be congruent to each other. If you do the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to get square root of 2. This is very, very easy, okay? Here's your 45 degrees because we said it's a half square, okay? Your 30, 60, the drawing kind of tells you what to do. There's your 30 because that's the smallest angle. That's obviously the second largest. There's your right angle. Well, if you can remember this combo that the sine of 30 is 1 half. Sine 30 is one half. Just memorize one of them. Sine of 30 is one half. You got the rest of them. This is then therefore going to be square root of three. And you don't even have to memorize this. If you did the Pythagorean theorem, you would get square root three. One squared, that's a four. B squared is uh, three. Square root of three is root three. Okay, you've got to know this. Now, we're also going to have to know how to plot points. Can you plot the point one zero? You have to be able to do that. Can you plot the point zero, 01? And I'm not kidding with you. Then, do you know the alphabet? Okay. Cosine, comma, sine. It's alphabetical. Okay. Then you're also going to have to know the inverse uh, trig functions. Sine, sine's inverse is cosecant. Cosine's inverse, remember we talked about this in other videos, the inverse is just spell it backwards except put an E in there instead of an O. And then tangent, of course, inverse is cotangent. That's pretty straightforward, okay? Now, you're gonna have to know this stuff. Here we go. Let's continue. Bam, 172. Sine of three pi over two. Now guys, here's what's awesome about this. The denominator, we've talked about this in other, in other videos, the denominator tells you what the reference angle is. What's 180 divided by two? Bam, 90. So you're working with 90. How many 90s? Three 90s. One, two, three. Guess what this is? Three pi over two. What's the sign of it? Sign is negative one. Isn't that awesome? What's cosine of it? Zero. Okay. What's tangent? You have to know how to do tangent. Tangent is always equal to opposite over adjacent. But because we're going to graduate from geometry and start thinking about this in a trig trigonometric way rather than geometric, tan is going to equal sine over cosine. What's sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. What's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, tangent is sine over cosine, all right? In other words, rise over run. Tangent and slope are the same thing, okay? Bam! What's tangent of pi, 3 pi over 2? Sine over cosine. What's negative 1 divided by 0? Undefined. So, so now we would say that there is no tangent value at 3 pi over 2, okay? Next one. There we go. Uh-oh. Inverse functions. Secant 5 pi over 4. Again, what's the reference angle? What's well, 180 divided by 4? Bam! 45 degrees. How many 45s? Five of them. One, two, three, four, five. What's the secant of 45? Well, in order to do secant, you'd have to do cosine. Let's go to our reference triangle. What's cosine of 45? What's adjacent over hypotenuse? It's 1 over root 2. Can you uh, simplify uh, radicals? Can you uh, rationalize the denominator? It's going to be root 2 over 2. Now, where are you? We are definitely here in quadrant 1. Therefore, it's going to be a positive root 2 over 2. It's that easy. Cosecant. Cosecant is obviously inverse sine. What's sine 45? Whew, 1 over root 2. It's going to be the same thing. Root 2 over 2. Okay, cotangent. Well, what's tangent? Tangent would be opposite over adjacent. 1 over 1. Well, what's cotangent? Well, it's going to be that 1 over that 1. It's still what? 
one. Is everything positive? Yes. Okay, next. Let's move on to five pi over six. What's the reference angle? Bam, 30, you got it. 30 degrees, because you have 180 divided by six. How many 30s? Five 30s. One, two, three, four, five. Five 30s. Isn't that awesome? Of course, this is what? One six shy of 180. Now, what do you got over here? You got, in order to get to quadrant two, you have to do negative x comma y. So therefore, cosine's negative, sine's positive. Sine of 30 degrees is one half. Is it positive or negative? Positive. Cosine is root, root three over two. And again, you have to know your 30, 60. Okay, sine 30 is one half, cosine 30 is root three over two. And of course, cosine is negative in quadrant two. Tangent of 30 degrees. 30 degrees, opposite over adjacent. Well, tangent 30 equals one over root three. Can you rationalize the denominator? Of course you can. Multiply by root three over root three. That'll give you one root three over three. Positive or negative? Well, where are you? You're definitely in quadrant two. It's going to be sine divided by cosine, which is, bam, negative. All righty then. Next one. Sine of negative three pi. Well, let's see what we got here. What's the reference angle? Guess what? 180. Negative three 180s. All right. One, two, three. That's going to be one, two, three negative 180s. Okay. What's the sign? Zero. What's cosine? Whew, negative one. What's tangent then? Sine over cosine, which is zero divided by negative one, which is whew, zero. Let's go to the next one. You see how easy this is? You see why trigonometry is awesome? Next one, three pi over two. Three pi over two. What's the reference angle? Bam, 90 degrees. Let's take a look at our unit circle, which by the way, you can create this unit circle on your own. Three pi over two. Three pi over two, three what? 90s. One, two, three. There you go, 90s. Secant, secant is inverse of cosine. What's inverse of zero? Well, if you invert zero, think about it. What's zero? It's zero divided by something. Let's put it over one. Well, if you inverse zero, where's the zero gonna be? Denominator, which means undefined okay secant is undefined at this spot uh what do we got here cosecant cosecant is inverse sine what's the inverse of negative one Whew. definitely still what negative one again all right cotangent what is tangent first what is tangent of this down here what is tangent it would have been negative one over zero we want cotangent which is Zero, you invert it. You do cosine over sine rather than sine over cosine. And the last one, here it is. 11 pi over four. What's the reference angle? Bam, 45 degrees. That takes us how many 45s? You got what? 11 45s, let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, bam, 11. You're in quadrant three, which is important because what do you know about this? It's negative cosine, negative sine. How do we know that? Because you, in order to get to any of these points, you'd have to go to the left and then down. Negative x, negative y. Guys, trigonometry is awesome. Now, what's the reference angle? It's definitely a 45, 45 right triangle. We're taking a look at sine of 45, which we already figured out is root two over root two. Or, or sorry, it's, it's root two over two. Positive or negative? Negative, they're both negative down here. All right. Uh, cosine of the same angle, same thing, negative root two over root two, I'm sorry, negative root two over two, and tangent, that would be what? One, opposite over adjacent. Is it positive or negative down here in quadrant three? In quadrant three, tangent is definitely sine over cosine, which is going to be absolutely what? Positive. So, there you have it. That's the last one there, guys. Any questions or concerns? Please send me an email. Thanks for checking out the blog. Good times.